Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. So we have another uh, Bath and Body Works haul, duh. Uh, <coughs> okay, let's try that again. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So yes, we have another Bath and Body Works haul today of the new Black History Month Perfumers Collection candles that I was looking forward to. Um, I had a number of exchanges from the last batch of candles. So if you're wanting to buy some candles, I wouldn't recommend the following three. Uh, well, following two, one wasn't bad. But so what happened was I exchanged spring clothesline, which is like totally unscented. So that went right back to the store. Uh, Calypso Clementine was also very light, but then also just smells like dirty oranges. I so don't need that. So that went back to the store. And then I didn't even burn greenhouse fern. I got carried away by the really pretty packaging. Uh, but when I kept smelling it, I was like, there's no way I'm going to burn this and enjoy it. So that went back to the store. Um, although that one had notes that were very suspiciously similar to... I think there was like a test fragrance called Morning Rainfall or something in the single wick. I don't know if anyone smelled that and can compare the greenhouse fern, that'd be greatly appreciated. But also speaking of repackages, oh my God, we need to talk about that too. And I'll do that at the end of the video. But we need to mourn the loss of the product ingredients database on bathandbodyworks.com. I can't believe it. It's truly an end of an era. I was putting in my Instagram story yesterday if you saw it. But the product ingredients database, which allowed us to uh, look up ingredients list numbers, ILN, and like look up repackages, and then also look up new products before they hit the website or even the stores, is gone. It's just completely gone. So we, we will mourn that. Uh, era of the um, product ingredients database at the end of the video if you're interested. But before we do that, we do have the haul, so let's get into it. Okay, so yes, we have the Black History Month collection. There's four fragrances in there. And according to the signage, signage it says a collection of exclusive candle fragrances. So I guess you would assume they're new fragrances that are exclusive to that collection. Uh, and it says, get to know what inspired perfumer Gwen Gonzalez and designer Katria Judkins to create this collection of exclusive candle fragrances. And the candles look like this, but in four different colors. And that's what that looks like. It has their signature on it. And then the perfumer Gwen Gonzalez says, it's an endlessly fascinating journey of self-expression and sensory exploration. And then the designer Katria Judkin says, I love being able to do work that feels like it fits me. I love being able to create and I love that I can get to create things that other people can love and enjoy. And yes, she certainly did an excellent job of placing text on a square box. So yes. Uh, so we have four fragrances. I didn't buy one of them. The sandalwood one, Gwen's no. I'm sorry, girl, Gwen, but your note does not smell great. <laughs> Um, ooh, oh my god, I mean, I made, it was like I truly made a stink face in the store because it was just so nasty. The sandalwood fragrance, and I normally don't like sandalwood, so I figured I probably wouldn't enjoy it. But there's that weird, like, pungent, it almost smells like dookie or like poo. Uh, like, that type of, like, pungent, like, dookie smell. Like, you stepped into, like, dog doo-doo and then tried to, like, spray it with sandalwood perfume. It was just, to cover it up, just not the jam. So that one stayed right at the store. But we did get the other three. So we have My Sweet Sisters right here, and that's what that looks like. Um, and the, there's like a pearlescent gradient finish on it. It is a wrap though. I, online it kind of makes it look like it might be, um, like the actual finish on the glass. If anyone remembers that one, like New Year's collection that had like cufflinks or something in it. Um, and that had a beautiful pearlescent finish on the glass itself and the glass on the finish on it was so pretty But unfortunately all the fragrances were like repackages or like something boring and new that I didn't get any of them I think cufflinks or whatever that was called was the only new one and it was a cologne scent So I didn't need that uh, Unfortunately, this is just a wrap you can see the seam right there, but it is what it is So yes, we have the box with the text on it uh, so this one says, the only thing that can compete with my love for my sisters is my love for chocolate. Some of my best memories growing up include sharing laughter and tears with sweets. Uh, and then it says, fragrance created by Gwen Gonzalez and designed by Katria Judkins. And it has their, uh, name and their, like, signature in gold foil. The notes on this read, sugared cinnamon, toasted hazelnut, and cake batter. Uh, it has the core wicks on it with the white wax, and that's what that looks like. Yeah, this one... Uh, it reminds me, um, of course, I'm always going to make comparisons. Hello, that's what you're on my channel for. Uh, but <laughs> uh, you get a chocolate, coconut, like powdery bakery fragrance that's quite similar to... This hit me in the store right away. Uh, they give warmth. Was it like a chocolate marble cupcake? What was this called? 
Marble Chocolate Cupcake. Uh, sweet cocoa, milk chocolate, topped with vanilla glaze. This was part of like the Giving Tuesday collection. I have burned quite a bit of it. I actually kind of really dug this. It was kind of like ice cream bar, ice cream bar given like a bakery chocolate, like an even more chocolatey twist to it. But yeah, it's qu quite similar to that. It has like this like powdery cupcake quality to it. Yeah, it's like a powdery cocoa with like a cupcakey, cakey element underneath. And this does that, but this one's a little bit more like, there's almost like a prettiness to it. That, I, that when you smell this alone in isolation at the store and when I just did now, um, you don't quite pick it up. But in comparison, because this one's like more bakery, this one almost has a prettiness to it that can also be like kind of equated to the sort of pretty chocolate cocoa fragrance that we got from Cocoa Roasted Chestnuts, which this had so much heaps of like a body care perfuminess in it. This is so much more like perfumey and inedible and body care and pretty than the My Sweet Sisters is. But there's a similar interaction of that like cocoa powder and this one has chestnut and this one's what, hazelnut? Yeah, so you can see kind of the comparison there. It's kind of has a similar uh, interaction, but this one's still way more perfumey, inedible and like weird than My Sweet Sisters is. But this one, I also get a little bit of like a coconut in there too. Kind of reminds me of that toasted coconut s'mores or toasted coconut uh, cookie. And then was it some other toasted, it was like repackaged like three times or whatever. You know that toasted coconut cookie and s'mores and whatever the third one was. Uh, but yeah, it's a whole lot like that too. I definitely get, so you get a powdery chocolate cocoa action that's similar to both the cocoa in this, the toasted coconut s'mores thing, and this, oh, toasted coconut clear, that's what it was, and also this. So that type of cocoa, there's all, so it's like powdery, uh, and then it's mixed with a little bit of like a nutty coconut action that smells like the sort of like a coconut graham cracker that you got in toasted coconut eclair, uh, and then a little bit of a prettiness that is kind of coming from this. So if you like a cocoa plus a little bit of like a coconut bakery type of fragrance it's not super groundbreaking or unique on coal it's similar to all the ones that i just talked about but it is what it is so we'll see how it goes um i'll have to burn this one and see what it does but that was my sweet sisters there uh it's the only gourmand one in the collection so if you want something gourmand that's like it doesn't even say chocolate on the bottom which is weird but i guess the cake batter is supposed to be a chocolate cake batter i don't know but yeah, so that was my sweet sisters right there. Uh, it is not the positively sweet dark chocolate truffles, if you're wondering. Uh, the next one we have is Anna's Garden, and that's what that looks like right here. Orange blossom, white tea, and jasmine musk. And those would be like so notes right up my alley. Um, yeah, it's a clean green floral. Yeah. Um, I guess the white tea and the jasmine, it's like not straight up orange blossom in the way that like, you know, sea salt neroli or the orange blossom this is, but you know, it's a mixture of white florals. So there is a little bit of almost as like sunscreeny beachy solar floral quality in here for sure with the jasmine and the orange blossom. And then gave it a little bit more of like this sort of clean zen spa element from the white tea note. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminds me of like something in between fresh bamboo, which we have here. Uh, and this was sweet bamboo, lush jasmine, and wild grasses. But this one's so much more like green and intense on that like bamboo. And like it used to have like hyacinth as a note in here once too. as has that, that dewy spring bulb floral um, mixed with heaps of like this grassy bamboo quality. So much more grassy. Uh, but it's kind of in between that and then the flower cart candle that we had last year. And that's what that looks like. Floral bouquets, fresh cut stems, and lush greenery. And this one's a little bit more uh, powdery, almost like a cosmetic smell to it, like a perfumey cosmetic smell to this one. Uh, and this one's kind of sits in between both of the fresh bamboo and the flower cart. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a, a clean white floral fragrance. has a little bit of like a green grassy component to it. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I don't know, when I think of Anna's garden, I think of more of like a traditional um, like garden where you would plant like roses and whatever you would plant, plant like outside in like a traditional garden. Whereas like an orange blossom would have to come from an orange tree, which is usually from like an orange grove, which isn't really a 
uh, garden, so to speak. Uh, jasmine is usually like on a vine or like a jasmine bush that's kind of on a trellis or on a fence or something. So it's not really a garden either. And then white tea, obviously, is not really necessarily part of a garden either. Um, but... I mean, I guess it's like grassy and floral. It says, a tribute to my mom whose flower gardens always made us feel at home wherever we were. But yeah, I don't know. When I think of Anna's garden, I just think of like a quintessential like spring garden with like blooming flowers and like roses and that kind of stuff. But yeah, whatever. Uh, Anna's garden right there. Uh, lastly, we have Yumi and the Sea. And I was bitter about this quote on my Instagram live, if you were in it, many times because um, I was perhaps envious of this uh, moment that she talks about. A memory captured in time, discovering a hidden beach cove with my love bathed in the last drops of crystalline sunlight. I wish I could go to a beach cove with my imaginary love and be bathed in the last drops of crystalline sunlight, but it has not happened for me yet. So I will burn this candle and evoke that memory uh, with her. So you, me, and the sea, um, blue orchid, fresh eucalyptus, and salt water. Yeah, um, this one's nice. I think the eucalyptus comes through. There's very much like a planty greenness to it, mixed with like a juicy aquatic component. Um, this one kind of recalls slightly blue bungalow, but not exactly this. But I'm just trying to give you comparisons in terms of the, the, like the closest like family. A salted sea breeze, beachside eucalyptus, and floral shores. So yeah, obviously kind of has a... Um, similar quality. This one's a lot more floral and just juicier and sweet uh, than this is. This one's a lot more planty and almost kind of smells like leaves or like bark almost with a little bit of like this sort of like aquatic floral component underneath it. Yeah, I would say clean, aquatic, planty floral is kind of what it comes off as. Kind of, um, you know, in the Sea Spray or Sunrise Lagoon candle we've had before, but not quite as juicy. Uh, but yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. You, me, and the sea right here. So those were the three candles. And then Gwen's note, the Sandwell one, was not the jam, so that one stayed right there. Uh, and that's it for the Trailblazers Black History Month uh, Gwen and Contria collection. So there was that. Uh, let's see, moving on. Um, what else did we have? Um... I had some rewards to redeem and the new single wick, newly priced $16.95 single wicks are out now. So I redeemed two rewards on that. There's a, I think it's called the Accords Collection and they have this with has the gray wax and the black lid and the black label. Kind of has a handsome minimalist look to it that I enjoy. And we have Orange Blossom right here. Uh, pressed Citrus Green Honeysuckle Vanilla. And I tried burning this one and these just, they, they just don't burn very well. Uh, at least this one did not. Um, it just like, it had go going for like four or five hours. Eventually put an Illuma lid on it, but that just didn't help it either. Cause it was just like snuffing the oxygen out. The flame just got smaller. It was just a hot mess. Um, but in any case, um, and obviously use the Lumalid at your own risk because those are designed for a large single wake Yankee, but I use them at my own risk to try to expedite the uh, pooling on these candles. This is incredibly similar to Sea Salt and Neroli, but it has a sweeter, juicier orange note up top. But otherwise, they're very, very, very similar. Um, yeah, this one's sandier and grittier, and then this one's sweeter and creamier. Uh, so if you want a sweeter, creamier version of Sea Salt and Neroli, which I'm not mad at, uh, then check out Orange Blossom. It has that quintessential Neroli Orange Blossom white floral type of fragrance in there. Um, but yeah, this one is just really, it's like quite, it almost has like a, almost like an orange creamsicle sweetness to it. Uh, like, cause if you smell a true orange blossom, uh, out in the wild, it has just a very natural intoxicating white floral fragrance to it. And once again, orange blossoms don't actually really smell like orange. So this is like a fantasy version of it cause they really juice up that extra sweet, uh, vanilla and orange in here to make it more sweet. Uh, but yeah, it's nice. It's like a it's like a nice orange blossom neroli fragrance with heaps of this like juicy, creamy orange vanilla fragrance. Uh, the only thing with this is it's a little like I don't want to say redundant or expected rather. Like I've tried many orange blossoms in my time, uh, and it's just like it's very similar or comparable. And like because we had sea salt neroli, which was so excellent last year, it's kind of like okay, been there, done that. Except it's just a sweeter, sweeter, juicier uh, vanilla vanilla version of that so orange blossom right there still a very nice fragrance nonetheless it's just i've smelled so many of them that it doesn't seem very new but there are other ones in the collection uh there's a amber that has like a plum and rose note in it it's like a very juicy kind of sensual uh body care 
type of fragrance to it, which I actually quite enjoyed, but single wicks just don't give me the performance that I need that like if they were all three wicks, I would have probably bought them, but not not single wicks. Uh, and I almost don't even want to waste a reward on them. Um, then we have lemongrass, which smells a whole lot like lemon mint leaf. It has that sort of like lemon jelly beans with like a mint uh, component underneath. That actually smells quite like lemon mint leaf or lemon mint tea. Uh, we then had cypress, which was really great. I almost kind of wish I would have picked that one up because that one seemed a little bit more new, new and unique uh, and distinct. The cypress was really excellent. It was kind of like your, like kind of like a Christmas tree fragrance, but not so like on the nose Christmas, like fresh balsam. It was more like foresty, uh, tree planty in the way that you get that like juicy realistic sap note but there was almost like this herbal crispness to it that made it a little bit more like all year around and evoked more of the natural plant forest foliage feel that you get from I guess like a cypress tree but yeah I mean I could even like just imagine myself like feeling the sort of like that texture of like the the sap and the you know the the cypress uh in there but yeah that was quite nice I kind of wish I would have got that one just because this one didn't perform very well uh and it's kind of been there done that but orange blossom is still quite nice uh what was that vanilla was um nice too that was like a vanilla extract fragrance made a little bit uh more perfumey i want to say yeah but it was a nice very juicy it was like no it was like vanilla extract with an like extra marshmallow sweetness to it is what that was yeah so you get that vanilla extract like sort of that pure vanilla extract type of, type of smell with like a marshmallow sweetness to it uh, this was like weeks ago when I smelled this. So that's why I'm still trying to recall my memory. Uh, and I think that was the full lineup. But I enjoyed them, all of them, actually. Quite quite nice. Um, it's just too bad they're just single wicks and not three wicks. If they're three wicks, I would have pro probably got all of them except for lemongrass. Just because it was so similar to uh, lemon mint leaf. So there was that. Uh, and then the other new single wick to talk about is the Sweetheart Cherry Candle right here. And that's what that looks like. Unfortunately, this is only available in a single wick this time around. But it does have a body care release to it as well. Uh, let's see, Wild Cherry, Crushed Pistachio, and Whipped Vanilla. Uh, this one was actually quite strong, really nice. Um, this one has like the core wick on it rather than the thick rope like wick that the orange blossom had. Yeah, um, kind of synthetic, but you know, it's expected of BBW. It's a very much a cherry body care fragrance. It reminds me a whole lot of Sunset Glow, uh, which I love using the Sunset Glow body wash, and I was like, Darn it, I wish I had a candle with this. Ideally, a three wick with the original beautiful sunset glow, like mountain wraparound would be so pretty. Uh, but then I think, was it her name? Carla on Instagram was letting me know there actually was a sunset glow single wick way back when, but I, I didn't discover sunset glow until the second release. So I didn't realize or had forgot that sunset glow even had a single wick. Uh, so in any case, if you miss that or don't have that anymore, then this is kind of like the next best thing to having sunset glow in a candle format. So you get... The cherry in there is very sweet and juicy, similar to the Sunset Glow sweet cherryness. But there's almost like this gourmand, like caramelized nut note in there in the background, uh, which I guess is the pistachio in here, but also like the sort of caramel sweetness that you got in the Sunset Glow candle. Um, and then most certainly a body care floral underneath that turns this into more of like an inedible body care cherry fragrance that gives it that sort of synthetic Bath & Body Works body care vibe to it. But yeah. Um, yeah, if you enjoy Sunset Glow, this is quite similar to it, and for a single wake, it actually performed quite well, like, like, three to a four in a smaller bedroom, whereas most single wicks are, like, ones, um, so, yeah, and it, perf it performed generally all right it takes a while to pull out but did much better than the orange blossom so that was sweetheart cherry there if this was in a, in a three wick i would definitely buy one uh and enjoy it but i'll just try the single wick uh in the meantime uh and i think that is it anything else to talk about they have some of the new aromatherapy body care some rainfall retreat and some oh some Himalayan Oasis or something like that. To totally boring. Didn't need any of that. Uh, Love Rose Vanilla is back though. That is amazing. Oh my gosh, such an awesome fragrance. If you like rose fragrances much like I do, uh, check out the Love Rose Vanilla. Unfortunately, no candle coming out with it like they used to in the back in the day. But the body care of Love Rose Vanilla is amazing. I think it's called like Inspire Love or something like that this time around. Uh, the other regular body care none of that was out yet outside of calypso clementine which is not a great fragrance so ugh. uh and i think that's it uh so my annual sale i think is wrapping up this weekend thank god um there's just 
really nothing to be had at SAS. And once again, I've said my thoughts on this. It's totally expected. Uh, and it's better that they don't have to clear and sour or overstock so much stuff from their eyes. So uh, go Bath and Body Works. Oh, and then, hello, I need to continue this ramble train. So um, let me pause for a moment and then gather my thoughts. And then we'll come back and talk about the, the morning of the ingredients list uh, number product ingredients database. Okay, um, so wow, this is crazy. So the day that I'm doing this video is exactly one year from last year uh, where I did a exposing all the repackages of the Bath & Body Works candle dupe and repackage guide. One year later, it is no more. Oh my gosh, so the video was on January 13th, 2023. And today is January 13th, 2024. And it, the, the database is officially dead. So as you guys remember, uh, exactly one year ago from today. Uh, I did a video exposing all the repackages at Bath & Body Works via the, via, via the product ingredient database uh, that is, used to be, that was formerly available on the Bath & Body Works website. You could scroll all the way down and get to product ingredients and it would open up an entire database that was searchable and showed a lot of the, you know, recent products from the past uh, many years. Uh, and it showed like the entry, all the different entries from all the past years. And then it assigned an ingredients list number to it, which is kind of like the number they assigned to the product formula. Uh, and so what happened was one year ago um, on Reddit, uh, there was some thread on the Bath and Body Works subreddit about how they thought campsite coffee was not Paris Cafe. And I was like, this is just the most blasphemous thing ever. I just can't even believe it. I've owned campsite coffee, uh, all the intense coffee, Paris Cafe, coffee and Tonka, all of those. And they all just smell the freaking same. And I'm just like, there's simply no way that those are not the same. But people were swearing that campsite coffee is different because the notes, which are just words printed on paper that anybody can just manipulate on the company end. Um, because one said like, you know, uh, like campsite donuts versus sugared brioche or something. So they were like, no, campsite coffee is totally different from Paris Cafe. And I was like, once again, this is just absolutely ridiculous. Let me put an end to this. So what I did is I went searching around the product ingredients database, which I think was up for quite some time, even before I had made that video one year ago. And I was like, I wonder if there's any kind of evidence I can find through this uh, database where I can like match up these fragrances. And if there's something I can match up and sure enough, the products had a ingredient list number and ILN that you could uh, look up and it was assigned to each product. Uh, and you could look up and compare apples to apples to see if it was the same. And sure enough, Campsite Coffee, Paris Cafe, and Coffee and Tonka all had the same ILN. And I was like, oh my God, finally, I have some like ammunition that I can use to, you know, uh, preach to the masses about repackages at Bath and Body Works. Otherwise, it's just like, you know, everyone's nose is different and we're subjective and all this kind of stuff. But it's like, girl, no, some of these candles truly are the same friggin' thing and like stop being bamboozled by the packaging and the naming. And that was certainly the case with the Campsite Coffee and the Paris Cafe. And so I had, that was the impetus for me to then finally go through all the candles in the database and like compare and contrast and co cross-reference like suspected fragrances that we had figured it would be a repackage by nose and then confirmed them by ILN and we had like a lot of fun like uh Instagram lives where we're all like just going on our computers and looking up the database and cross-referencing all the candles that we thought were repackages and so I compiled a whole list and it was really fun but uh besides the um the repackage confirming action that you could do with the ILN. It was also, if you knew how to work the database, you could find out like new product names and product forms like before they hit the website, like months in advance, uh, because they would publicly publish new product names in the database. And so you could like search around and, you know, do things uh, to the database to find out what was coming. And so of course, a lot of us on social media kind of figured that out. Uh, you know, Life Inside the Page also publishes uh, new information Information on her blog as well and so she has other sources outside of the database so you can kind of like confirm and so it was a nice way to know what's coming down the line and we would all get super excited about it so like on one hand yeah I guess from Bath and Body Works standpoint um, it's not great to have product that's like leaked early even though they're not really leaked because they're published publicly on a database online that is public but in any case for the purpose of this conversation. I guess it's not great to have leaks, but hello, you're getting like free promo and free advertisement from all of us like, you know, influencers and reviewers and bloggers about new product coming and people would get super excited for it and plan around it and all that kind of stuff. So at the end of the day, it was still a positive thing. So fast forward to just the past week or two or whatever. Uh, and what happened was the Bridgerton, there's a, a Bridgerton collaboration collection that is supposed to surface for spring two or three. And Bridgerton is some 
some kind of like a show on Netflix or whatever. I, I don't watch Netflix, so I don't know. Uh, but apparently it's like on its third season. I think the third season is supposed to release uh, in May. And I, so I think in conjunction with that, Bath & Body Works is supposed to do a collaboration with it. And so, of course, through the database, uh, came names that were like very much Bridgerton oriented. They were like a Bridgerton study and a Danbury uh, shortbread and a Queen Charlotte's tea and all this kind of stuff was published publicly on the database. And so that happened. Uh, but then we also saw a photo from somebody who got early access to it. And then I think that was the nail in the coffin for the product database was because Shortly after all that Bridgerton stuff like kind of released and then there was something on Life Inside the Pages Instagram where the photo got removed of it as well. So obviously Bath and Body Works has eyes and ears and they're like monitoring it and because I think I obviously speculate and only theorize because I don't actually have information but uh, I guess I would theorize or speculate that because the Bridgerton stuff is a collaboration with a third party and it's like a sort of a high profile collaboration with like a Netflix show, they don't want that information to get out there early or later leak and so that's why they're like swift to remove that candle uh and then also took down the ingredients because what happened was like the day before the product ingredients database went down they actually removed the entries of the bridgerton stuff even though they were there previously uh meaning that they were like i think the bridgerton thing was the nail in the coffin of trying to take all of this down and so there were ultimately uh entries for wallflower refills of like five bridgerton uh fragrances and then also three wick candles as well were eventually in the database database as well. And so I think because that is a high profile collab, so to speak, they don't want that information to get out and certainly not photos and that kind of stuff. So they were like, you know what, like maybe they were already thinking of taking the product ingredients database down because of the repackaging stuff that goes on here and all of the early product leaks. Uh, but I think the Bridgerton thing was the thing that I finally did it. And they're like, okay, we need to just like shut this down and take it off. So that was the end of the, uh, I think yesterday was the first day I noticed the product ingredients database was down. So yeah, a very, it was a, it was a fun ride while it happened for that entire year. I think for most of people, I'm just like totally geeking out and you don't understand. But for the people who do understand, uh, it was truly just, it was great. It like added like depth and history and just a complexity to Bath and Body Works like product offerings because you were able to search for like old products and look for ILNs and be able to compare and contrast. And you could even compare and contrast the ILNs even before, um, the products hit the store so you could actually figure out if something was a repackage even before you smelled it because the island would be similar to something that you suspected from before uh and so it's great to be able to confirm that and so now we don't necessarily have that we still have them listed on printed on the bottom uh but you you can't look up ahead of time and you don't have access to the entire searchable database you have to have, physically have a photo or the product in your possession to compare the and contrast the ILNs now, which kind of sucks. Also, it was great because with the ILNs, you could compare and contrast like a wallflower or a single wick format, which I often don't have. And so even if the wax color was different on the three wick, you could then like scoot down to a either a single wick or a wallflower and then compare and contrast that apples to apples to a different fragrance and see if it was a repackage and you can't do that anymore either and so i think the ingredients uh database originally existed because you know they wanted to increase like transparency and know what like ingredients were in your products because they're like printed on the bottom so it was great to be able to look that up on the database but i think it became so popular and it probably wasn't supposed to be as popular or like uh, consumer facing uh, because there were a lot of entries that were like new products that weren't supposed to be out yet or there would be like random typos or like some of the entries would say like test on it. So I think it was kind of like a database that was used mostly on their back end, but they published it for the front end for the consumer, but probably not think that so many people would use it and that we would be able to discover the things that we did in the database. Uh, so there was that too. And so what happens now is if you try to go to that web page, of course, you know, I have a hotkey to a bookmark to it. It just refreshes to the home page. You can still Google it, but when you try to click on the link, it just refreshes to the home page as well. It's gone from the footer as well. So it just doesn't exist anymore. 
And what they did was they moved uh, the information for, so you can still see what the ingredients are for the product. So as long as the product is like available for purchase currently on the site and on the side, there's like a little drop down that said like ingredients on it and lists all the ingredients, but it doesn't say the island on it anymore. And you um, once again, can't search through old entries like you were able to. So I think because the ingredients listing did move to a different section on the actual product page now i think this was something that was in the works because i like i would imagine that they would have to engage development or developers the web developers to take that information from the database and then put it on the front end uh, for the actual product page and that takes some time so maybe they were already planning on getting rid of the product ingredients uh database and moving it to the front end because of the the repackages and the leaks that we were having uh and so i think they had to have already had that going the ball rolling and doing that process or perhaps it was indeed like the bridgerton thing was so high priority and such a like a red alert that they were like okay you developers need to drop everything and put these uh ingredients on the product page and take down the actual database itself uh, so people can't search it because the Bridgerton thing is so like high profile whatever so I don't know if it was something that we're already thinking of doing and so they were already like starting the coding of development of moving it to the product page because of the non Bridgerton leaks as well as like the, the repackaged stuff that we talk about here online or it was indeed because the Bridgerton stuff was such a like red alert ordeal for them that they were like no we need to like just do this now and nip it in the butt and be done with it so that was indeed the end of the product ingredients database but oh my god i just have some f feelings about it i just yeah i'm definitely sad it was just a fun era in bath and body works for me to be able to look it up and i know me and so many people in the candle community on instagram lives and going back and forth and messages of trying to figure out repackages and stuff it was a lot of fun and i guess having that removed and that like depth in the history and the database and all that it provided it not being here anymore is just it, I feel a little bit empty inside but of course I'm just like the 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 biggest Bath and Body Works geeks out there so I'm gonna feel it a little bit more than the average consumer does but yeah so womp womp one year later it is gone so we can no longer expose them at least through the database but we can still pick up candles from the printed ingredients list number here and if you also have the old candle you suspect it being a repackage of or have a photo of it or you can find a photo on Mercari or you know Google or whatever then you can compare and contrast there but you kind of can't do it ahead of time like you used to be able to and of course we won't quite get as such early product name leaks through the database but we'll still get them through other sources that other people are able to obtain so there's that but yeah kind of a sad moment but i guess it was fun while it lasted and nothing lasts forever so yeah uh but so yeah that was my huge long ramble about mourning the uh ingredients uh, product ingredients database in the ILN thing. Uh, it was a good run, but it's just, we can still do it to some extent if we get the candle and can see it on the bottom, but it's just not quite to the extent of like looking at the database and like, you know, being like, ha, told you, Campsite Coffee and Paris Cafe and Coffee and Tonka are the same friggin' thing. So that was satisfying for the year that we had that run for, but it is what it is. So at the end of the day, they're just candles and consumer items and they're just fr frivolous luxury items. So it's not that big of a deal. So in any case, that was that. So thanks so much if you watched this whole entire video, including the the island product ingredients database uh morning uh session that we had just now the funeral we had for the product ingredients database if you were here for all of that thank you so much uh leave all your thoughts down below and i'll talk to you guys later bye